Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force with some more Arc Age. Today I actually want to give you a little bit of a refresher as to what the heck this game is. Uh, we're in open beta right now, just a few days from the start of early access and the official launch of the English version of this game. And I thought this would be a great opportunity just to give you a refresher. You just go over some of the basics as to what Arc Age is, show you the combat, talk with you a little bit about the game. Uh, now I jumped in yesterday uh, while streaming. I basically hopped into the game, played for a few hours just to remind myself because it has, has been uh, I think like two or three months since I played in the alpha. So I just wanted to remind myself how to play the game before I reminded you how to play the game. And I think I, I, I've pretty much got everything under wraps. So we're just going to go over some of the basics. And every time I go do sort of like overview style videos of games, I always feel halfway through that I took too long to get to the combat. So I wanted to start off by just taking a look at and talking about the combat. Although I guess taking a look at like underwater combat isn't the best representation because it looks kind of wonky uh, <laughs> but this is a, a tab target style MMO so what that means is you're going to be you tab and lock on to individual targets and unless you have an ability that specifically is meant to hit in an area of effect uh, it, you're going to hit one target at a time I uh, just got a couple of quests here that we can pick up and oh yes the glider system we're going to talk a little bit about gliders and all that fun stuff I don't know what this is though we got a like a treasure chest at the bottom of the oh gosh darn it a couple of these sticky archer fish, and one of them is attacking my damn pet. Unfortunately, he doesn't really do much. He just follows me along. Uh, you can get a combat pet, but this is actually a mount. So at any time, if I say, like, I just want to kind of get the heck out of here, I can hop on him and run away, although it's not going to be that effective underwater. Son of a bitch, there's freaking... They're everywhere. All right, that's fine. We'll, we'll be fine, I think. I think we'll be fine. Actually, you know, you know what? I may need to run away. I think I need to run away. This is too scary. Jump on the glider, get away, uh, come come here please, snow lion, thank you, and that's just peace, I don't want, I don't want anything to do with that fish, he is a scary, look at how angry he is, he's been chasing me down, he's g giving me the stinker, he says, get down here, you, <laughs> and what we can do actually is we can heal ourselves up with a nice little ditty, a song as it were, do 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 do. I like this stuff. This is cool. Uh, the game does have food and whatnot, so I can like consume. Uh, so I've got some food right here that will store health over time. However, you also have these instruments such as lutes that will that you can play, and you playing the song will restore your health. It does have a cooldown though. I can pop this up over here, and you can see that the uh, the loot is still on cooldown. But while playing that instrument, it restores health per second. It's also got different stats on it. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the uh, combats in this game. Uh, you know, tab target. So I tab on, and then I just use my abilities. Uh, it's essentially what you played in World of Warcraft or Star Wars: The Old Republic. It is that exact same system in terms of how the combat works, as opposed to, I guess, sort of like an action system like you see in Terra or a hybrid system like you saw in the Elder Scrolls Online. This is very much so the traditional, the combat itself is traditional. Now they do some interesting things with the class system, uh, which is basically there are multiple skill trees that you can choose from. Please don't quote me on the exact number, but I believe it's somewhere like around 10. Uh, there's multiple skill trees that you can cho choose from, which essentially fill the various roles, like a warrior, a tank, a healer, a necromancer, a mage, a rogue, an archer, a skill to fill the all of the basic RPG roles, a skill tree, and then you pick three of those. So for example, the class that I have right now, which is known as a dark runner, has the battle rage, which is like the melee in your face warrior skill tree, shadow play, which is essentially like the rogue skill tree, it has stealth, for example, and then oromancy. Oromancy is a utility skill tree, it's very good for PvP, it's got some awesome effects like teleportation which is like a blink uh, self buffs with this uh, health lift some defensive things to absorb magic damage and restore health so I'm, I'm basically a melee warrior rogue with PvP skills that's sort of how you can look at it so these are three of the available skill trees and again I think it's around 10 but don't quote me on the exact number it has been a few months since I was really into this game uh, so you choose three of those multiple skill trees and that makes up your class again these three make me a dark runner if I even switched out one of these my class name would be something different and with all of the skill trees and the fact that you can combine uh, three 
three of them to make a specific class. I think there's somewhere like over a hundred different possible combinations. So what that means is there's a fairly decent amount of variety. And on top of that, all of those, I can, I, I'm a dark runner. Other dark runners aren't necessarily going to be exactly like me because you can't unlock every single skill in those skill lines. Uh, at, once you hit max level, you do you won't have enough. You won't have nearly enough skills to get everything that's available. So you have to pick and choose. Like for example, right now you can see I've got two extra skill points, but I don't want to use them because the skills that I have access to at this level uh, that I can unlock, I don't want my skill points invested in them. I'm looking for skills that are a little bit further down the tree. So I'm gonna have to wait essentially until I level up uh, in order to invest in them. Now something this does actually do unfortunately is it means like right now, so I could technically have two more skills on top of what I have at the moment or like I could do two more passive skills, but I could have two more active skills. And for me, more skills means more interesting combat. But since I am waiting to unlock skills later down the road, uh, right now my combat is pretty straightforward. I, I essentially only have like three combat abilities. I've got a charge and then a heavy attack and a fast light attack and that's basically it. And that's going to be the case uh, for a good chunk of my leveling experience. That's, that's going to be what happens. Uh, so you just noticed I hit overachieve with this uh, kill quest. So I had a quest to kill these these little fish here. And the, the some of the quests for gathering and killing you have three different stages in which you can turn in the quest. You can turn it in early, in which you, you'll get an experience reward and a, whatever, a currency reward, but it'll be less. You can turn it in on time, which will give you base level one, or you can overachieve it. And overachieving essentially requires 50% more. So if the quest requires me to kill 10 things, if I kill 15 things, then I will hit overachieve, and that's going to give you bonus experience. Uh, it's been my experience when leveling up in this game, uh, in the alpha, I did get to max level. That whenever you can overachieve, you should try to overachieve, because it's, it's just getting that bonus experience helps significantly with the leveling process. Alright, so we've got to go over here to turn in these two quests right now. So I've shown you a little bit of combat, but again, it was sort of on... The combat was on the uh, on the water. I'd like to show you some combat against things that are actually on land, but we've we've got these quests. Oh gosh, I'm like dismounting here. We've got these quests to turn in. Uh, so the mount thing's pretty cool. Again, he'll just follow you around in combat if you want him to, and you can hop on and off him at any given time. You're not restricted in terms of when you can do that. You're not even restricted in terms of when you can mount. Like I can uh, or fly. I can jump off him and hop on my glider right away. I can hop on my glider when in combat, which allows you to quickly get away. Uh, this is especially awesome in PvP if you're facing a melee character that doesn't have a lot of uh, ranged abilities available although everyone gets access to an uh, a shoot arrow so at the very least if they know what they're doing they should be able to shoot an arrow but you can potentially if you get far enough away you can glide away from a fight if someone's trying to gank you if there's like a big team coming after you uh whatever uh all right we're gonna turn these bad boys in and then I'd just like to show you a little bit of combat on the ground because it, it, I just think it looks a little less wonky than the than the water combat that we just took a look at. I think we got a bunch of snake things over here or something. Yeah, we do. Okay, so I can hop off this guy. So yeah, again, it's a tab target. I hit tab to cycle through nearby enemies, um, which I can show you better when there's multiple nearby me. And this game also features a combo system. So I talked about how you pick the you pick three skill trees to make up your class. And then within those skill trees, you can only unlock so many skills. A big part of making a build and, and building your character is going to be picking skills that synergize well with each other. So the combo system works that we have got these abilities that have a basic effect, but there's also an additional combo effect that you can trigger if a certain condition is met. Uh, so the way that works is, for example, we have our charge attack. When we open up with a charge attack, it applies that snare to the target. So immediately after charging, if we do our number two ability, triple slash, yes, triple slash has its base effects. It does damage. Three strikes for 96 physical damage. The first attack will shake the enemy. The second attack deals additional damage if the enemy is tripped. And then the third attack uh, increases melee damage 100%. However, 
the combo, as you can see at the bottom, is if a target is already snared, they become tripped. So the way that works is that I hit them with my one, it snares them, I then hit them with my two, the first strike will trip them, the second strike will, strike will get bonus damage because they're tripped. And then I hit them with my three, my three does three attacks, uh, sort of like the first one, but these are three fast attacks for less damage. And then what will happen is it combos, if the enemy is tripped, it does 23 three percent additional damage so you can see we just set those three things up uh, so what I can show you is if I just if I just run up to this guy and I start hitting my two we're just gonna get basic strikes now there's a chance for crit or whatever and then I can hit my three and we're just gonna get basic strikes there's no nothing special happens however if I do that order of operations that I talked about you're gonna notice these combos for additional damage so I'm gonna open up with my one and then follow up with my two, which my second strike will combo. There you go. And then I'll hit my three, which we get a combo off of that as well. So you can see we killed these things a lot faster when we get combos set up. And that's generally the, the principle. When you're building a character, you're going to pick skills that, that synergize with each other so that you get combos to try to maximize your damage or maximize effects. You know, you can basically, there will be abilities that if a target has some condition met, you will then stun them. And that's obviously a good, you know, that's a good thing to have. So, but yeah, you know, again, it's tab target. So I'm like, I'm on this guy and I could run over here and I could hit tab and we could cycle to that guy, cycle to that guy. And th these are the people that I'm facing. Now, if I have any AOE abilities, like I mentioned, I can get multiple enemies at once, but as a general rule of thumb, a lot of a lot of characters uh, you can obviously again, there's going to be AOE options, but a lot of the time we've got single target abilities that we're using that we're we're having to to select that individual target. Okay, so whew, <laughs> that is uh, that that's a a brief look at combat. Again, I like to open up with that just because I think a lot of people find that sort of stuff the most interesting. And the combat is what it is. You either like tab targeting or you don't. I feel personally, you, I I feel that people will either personally like tab targeting systems or they won't be interested in it. Uh, beyond the combat, which I think is sound, by the way, in, in terms of tab targeting, in terms of tab targeting games. This feels and plays very well. Uh, the the action and responsiveness to your inputs and all of that, it just works fantastically. Now, what's up with this glider thing? Well, the gliders are a pretty big part of this game. Uh, everyone's going to get a glider just by leveling up. You get a baseline gl glider. There's also higher level gliders that you can craft and or buy. Now, I happen to have patron status, which allowed me to purchase uh, this glider here, and it's a very good glider, uh, high speed, high gliding ability, moderate turn speed, moderate initial speed, and then it's got a special ability of somersault. And I can show you some of those special abilities here because we are actually going to want to glide down over in this direction. So I'm gonna go like this and I've got a lift that we can do right away, there we go. And now we're just gonna glide forward. And if I push forward, we get a little bit of accelerated speed. Uh, I believe it also accelerates your descent as well though. And then if you push backwards, it slows you up a little bit. Um, I've got the somersault abilities, which I'm gonna actually go down here first because I want to get up and get some more lift. And then I'll show you the somersault abilities and all that. Oh, let's go up like this, drop it, drop it, drop it, please, okay. And now we're going to go up here. I just usually have to wait a second. There's like a brief cooldown. Okay, so now we're going to go across this way. And then I've got the somersault abilities. Let's hit U first to go up. The somersault abilities with T and Y. So if I hit T, I'm going to somersault left. And then after a couple of seconds cooldown, I can hit Y, which will somersault me right. Uh, now, why would you want to somersault? Well, because aerial combat is a thing in this game. So you see me gliding right now. There could be other people gliding. And I need a hot, I need a hotkey these. I would never click these when actually trying to use them, but I can do this, which will shoot a charge forward and knock people out of the sky. I can hit people on the ground like this. It's pretty cool. I really like that. So this game has aerial combat. This game has naval combat as well. Uh, a, a really big part of this game, which we're not going to get to take a look at in the raw footage here, but I will show you some, some gameplay footage of uh, videos that I've recorded in the past. A big part of this game is the crafting system, and you can craft boats. So you can make yourself a boat and go out onto the ocean. And that is a huge, huge part of this game because crafting, this, this game focuses on two major things, PVP and crafting. If you are looking for a, a, a PVE MMO with a ton of uh, end game and a ton of dungeons, this is not the game for you. This is a game that focuses on open world, hardcore PVP, and I'll, I'll explain why it's 
hardcore and pretty intense in a little bit. Uh, and then it also focuses on crafting. Now you can see me sort of moving through this farm location here. A bunch of different scarecrows. These are all owned by individual players who can place whatever they want on their plot. And then you can also... Uh, you can get a plot and put a house on it. And there are several varieties of houses. This is uh, the, the sort of the initial, the onset of constructing a house. And it looks like we've actually got a fully built house over here. Uh, I don't know. I think this is a player owned one, but it could be one that's just sit, sitting in place. I'll find out in a second. Yeah, this is a player owned house. So this is a house. Uh, this is an Eastern style house. The game basically functions in a uh, two-faction west first east variety and it's very funny because it sort of works similar to the the real world in terms of thematically the west has uh, medieval castles and, and and very western style housing the east is very eastern oriental style housing so this is an eastern style house you can notice uh with just with the the roof shape and sort of the the, the trimming and everything it looks very eastern it looks very uh, oriental uh, but yes, this is a, a, a small eastern style house and there are medium and large houses. There are even castles that you can build. Now they are, it's not that you're getting wood and like putting up each one of the walls. You do need to get materials, which, which does happen to be wood and stone and things like that. But they are templates. There are templates and several varieties of houses. But you can get your plots, you can, you can do farming. Uh, it's going to be a similar, a similar, it's a sort of like, the way I like to think about this game is hardcore PvP where you have to watch your back like 24 seven and then com combined with farm fill. That's literally, that, 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 I think that's sort of the, the best way for me to say this game. And, and then mixed in some Assassin's Creed like naval warfare uh, because the, you're gonna be spending a lot of time on the water in this game, especially once you hit max level. Uh, now a lot of that has to do with essentially the way you get the best way to get rich the best way to get money in this game is by doing trade pack runs and the, the the way to maximize your profit from those trade pack runs is to take goods that you make on your continent across the ocean to the enemy's continent and that is very dangerous because this game has pvp same faction so you're not only can the enemy faction kill you but your same faction, people who are on your team, can flag themselves for PvP and kill you. Now, you're not going to see that right now with what we're doing, because that doesn't happen until around, I think, like level 25 or 30 is when that starts to become an option. But about halfway through leveling, because the max level right now is 50, halfway through leveling, you're going to have to worry about your own damn faction killing you. And there are, reper there are repercussions for that happening. They can't just do it all willy-nilly and... and suffer no consequences they get crime points they get brought to trial it is a trial by peers in which other people will look at the list of all of the crimes they've committed be it stealing from someone's farm or killing a player of their own faction uh they will look at the list of that and they will say we convict you you get this much time they get these uh, crime points which then will eventually turn them into a third faction, which is the pirate faction. And they've got their own small island, and they are neither west nor east. They sit on a small island in the middle of the ocean here, and they are enemies to both factions. And their goal, the people who do this are basically just trying to wreak havoc and, and do as much PvP as possible. And for me, that does sound like a little fun, but at the same time, I really like having like a home city, and I, I like being able to take advantage of the major cities and towns uh, on this continent. So I don't know that I'm to be pirating myself but that's a thing pvp enemy faction your own faction there's constant areas at war where the enemy faction can just walk in and just you know kill on sight and it's just man oh man the pvp is intense but there's also farmville stuff there is farmville stuff and that is essentially all of this so i'm going to chop down a tree i planted this tree here and now i chop it down and i get some wood now i planted the tree and it takes a, a, quite a while uh, depending on the plant, the tree, or the livestock that you place down in your plot. So here's my plot right here. I can click on it and you can get like, there it is. Get like information. I have to pay my taxes and whatever. Uh, I have to pay my taxes for this. Uh, it'll tell you how long it's protected until, so this is protected until uh, September 11th, 2014. And then at that point, if I don't pay my taxes by that date, what will happen is, although this is open beta, so all this stuff is going away anyways, but if you don't pay your taxes every week, then someone can take your stuff or demolish your house uh, without consequence, essentially. So you want to make sure you pay your taxes. Uh, otherwise, you will like, you see people who have houses set up. There's some people building some houses over here and whatnot. I'm just farming right now. This is open beta. I'm not going to go too crazy because I realize all this is going to be wiped in 
like a couple of days or what whatever so i'm not going too intense with this stuff but i just wanted to show you like you get these little farm plots and and you put plants down and why do you put plants down why would you even want to do that well you do it to sell stuff on the marketplace you do it to construct things to make trade packs to make money uh, which you'll be you'll be turning in uh, you'll be turning into special npcs ideally on the opposite factions caught in it because that's how you get the best reward it essentially i guess the simplest way of explaining it is that every zone has specialty items that can only be made in that zone and then you craft it there and you you put on a trade pack which has you moving very slowly but you can take vehicles like boats uh, to move more quickly uh, you put on a trade pack and you have to essentially walk it to another zone and if you walk it to the zone right next to your zone so if i make a trade pack here and then i walk it to this zone and turn it in there i'm going to get a little bit of reward but if i walk it to this zone or that zone or this zone i'm going to get more of a reward and if i get in a boat and 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 go all the way to the enemy faction zone i'm going to get the greatest reward and from that system from the way that works there's a lot of pvp that happens when, when people are trying to take their trade packs from one continent to the other in boat there's a lot of pvp that happens right in here people will be you'll be on your boat going to the other zone and then someone will come along in another boat they're gonna hop on their glider they're gonna drop right down on your boat if they're your own faction they can flag themselves and then attack you and kill you and then they take your trade pack they take your boat <laughs> you're screwed you're screwed all the time and effort you put into uh, doing your trade pack and all of that uh is basically for naught you just you lose it all, plain and simple. So th that's the sort of thing when I say that this game can be very... I mean, yes, you look at this and you're like, this is like force. This is, was this a stupid social game? What is this, Farmville? Yeah, it has this uh, sort of intense crafting stuff. But again, it's got, like I just talked about, it's got that crazy PvP. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun and it works. It would not work if the combat wasn't good. And I know there's going to be some people watching this video who just hate tab targeting systems. And, you know, I can't help you there. If you don't like tab target, if you're completely sick of it, then it won't matter, right? But if you don't mind tab targeting, or if it's a system that you actually enjoy, it's it's functional here. It works well. It's very responsive. And the PvP is just intense. Uh, with that said, it's really... Again, you're not seeing it right now because I'm level 16, but once I hit level 30, like I did in the alpha, it's just going to be absolutely insane. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I do know what to say. It's absolutely insane. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go over here. I just want to show you sort of the planting process and maybe even the watering process. How many turmeric do I have? I only have 64, so I actually need more of that. Uh, I believe there are seed vendors over here. So, yeah, I can just get some stuff just to show you. So let me pick up, like... I'm gonna purchase a duckling here, and here we go, sapling and seed. I'm gonna get two of the aspen trees, because these give a high yield reward for wood, which is what I'm ideally going for. And then I need a little bit more turmeric for a trade pack that I'm trying to build soon. Trade packs, again, are the systems that I recently, I just talked with you guys about. Um, and then I think I have enough water buckets. I've only got eight. I might need a little bit more. Is there a well right here? Here it is. So here's a well. So you go up to uh, wells. It'll be located pretty much all over the place. And then you, you basically fill up to get more ice, uh, more water buckets. I'm very surprised it only gave me one. Usually it gives me like four to five or something. Is this just like a really shitty well or something? Wow, I feel incredibly gypped. This is a terrible well. A, wells I, a well that I was at yesterday was giving me like four and five every single pickup. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, you know, RNG. RNG is uh, plays a big role in this game. Uh, so I'm going to go over here. I just want to show you sort of the planting process. And then after that, I will talk with you a little bit about the crafting and show you a little bit about the crafting stuff. So again, here's my scarecrow plot. And just like I placed down a scarecrow plot, people place down house plots, and then they have to bring several tiers of materials to construct it. That's why this is still in the process of building. They probably have more stone or more wood that they need to make, that they, that they need to uh, craft to complete the house. And then the completed houses look like this. So again, we already saw this uh, eastern style house, eastern small house. Check out this western style small house. So And, and they've got a few things in here, like he's got that and... He's got a alchemy table. So the al al alchemy table is actually uh, of the, uh, it's actually something that you can do. Oh, they, he's not letting me open the windows. You can basically decide if you want people to be able to interact with your house or not. He's got a fireplace in here, all of that. I don't know. I kind of like the, the inside of the eastern houses better. 
man. This guy's not letting me go in either. What the hell? All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our farm plot right over here. And finish planting this stuff. All right. So we got some turmeric here, and you can then see the outline of your farm plot and where you can plant it. Now, I can plant this stuff anywhere. I don't need to just... You can plant... I can plant my trees. I can plant... So I can plant this tree here if I want, but when it's not on my protected land, someone can come, just come take it. I'll do that to one of the turmeric because it's less valuable. So I can put this right here so I can try to like hide it or whatever. But if you don't have a farm plot, this stuff is not protected. So I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to water it. Okay. And it's got three and a half hours. And then after three and a half hours, it'll be fully grown and then we can come and harvest it. But since I've planted it here and it's not within my designated farm plot, Anyone that sees this can come over and steal it. And there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, so there's this, there's this thing where people will, yes, you'll have your farm plots, but you can only have so many. There's a restriction, okay? So once you have maxed out your farm plots, people who still want more planting stuff beyond like getting a guild or whatever, they will try to hide stuff within the environment. I can place it literally anywhere. I can go up into that mountain and I can, I can place it right there. You know, I can go anywhere and plant stuff. There's some restraint, like certain slopes you can't do stuff. But for the most part, you can pretty much go anywhere to plant stuff, okay? Uh, so what will happen, again, is people have their farm plots. They'll fill it up, but then they want more. They want, they want more wood to do stuff faster. They don't want to buy from the auction house. So they'll try to go in the middle of nowhere, and they'll try to plant these trees. And then there's like this, there's this whole game where people will essentially be looking for those hidden spots to try to take that stuff from them. I know it's evil, but it is what it is. Again, this is a pretty hardcore game. The PvP, all that stuff uh, can be pretty intense. And let's put out our duckling. I don't have enough room for the other stuff. Uh, so for the duckling here, I need to feed... I need some ground grain. So I'm going to have to get some ground grain to feed the duckling. Otherwise, he's going to die in two and a half hours. And that would be no good. We don't want him to die. And I need to water these. I don't think I need to water the aspens, no. I don't, but I need to water these and then they start their growing. The aspens just immediately start growing and then in 14 hours they'll be finished and then I can harvest them. I'm actually not going to get the grain for the duckling. I just wanted to sort of show you. I just wanted to sort of show you what this whole process was. Now let's talk a little bit about the crafting system. So crafting is, again, a second big part of this game. Just like the farming and all that stuff, uh, crafting is very, very a large component of this game as well. Look at all the different crafting perfection. Alchemy, construction, cooking, handicrafts, all this stuff, all this stuff. Husbandry, there's masonry, there's metalworking, there's carpentry, weaponry. Uh, so if you want to make certain, like if I want... An adachi, which is a two, type of two-handed weapon that I'm using. I need to just get the materials. I need to get the sunlight archaeum dust. I need to get the iron ingots. I get I get iron ingots from mining iron within the world and then smelting it. And uh, the blue salt wedge. It usually, most items have a specific thing that you can just buy from vendors, and they're relatively they're they're typically relatively cheap. Uh, so, crafting, much like resource gathering. And a lot of all of the crafting related stuff is directly tied to labor. So whether I'm mining a node, chopping down a tree, or c making something with the crafting system, it is going to use up labor. Now this is a big point of contention with this game, is that the labor system is restrictive on purpose. Now part of it is economy based in that they don't want people to just craft nonstop and flood the market. It's, it's supposed to be a balance of you are balancing your labor points to make sure that you're, you're trying to maximize what you get out of the labor pool that you have. Now, the issue is this being a free-to-play game, free-to-play players have restricted labor. Patron players have greater labor regeneration. You can see I've got the patron buff, regenerates 10 labor every five minutes while online, five labor every five minutes while offline. I also have a higher max labor than a non-patron. So non-patron players have a couple of thousand, I've got 5,000. So I've got a, a large potential pool, I regenerate it faster, and then this game also has a cash shop. It, it's a free to play game, so that are we not surprised? We're not surprised. But there's been a lot of argument about some of the things in the cash shop. I wanna point you to the two biggest things, because there are some things that don't really matter, uh, you know, like extra experience bonus, for example, from the, you can see I get 10% increased XP gain. This game does not take very long to level. When, when in the alpha, it took me less than a week to get to max level 
playing a, a significant amount for several days, but it was less than a week to hit level 50. Getting to max level is not difficult. This game can be grindy, but it is grindy at the end game. It is grindy when talking about crafting because there's a lot of RNG involved in terms of getting high rarity or getting special stats on those max level items. There's just, there's a ton of RNG uh, involved in that process. But these are the two biggest points of contention that people have. So again, the crafting system relies on labor which regenerates slowly, regenerates slower if you're free to play and has a smaller cap. And then on top of it, we've got this item right here. Workers' compensation restores 1,000 labor. It's got a four hour cooldown. So you can use that six times a day, right? You can use it six times a day. It's got a four hour cooldown. It costs 150 gems. So the gems in terms of cost to purchase 750 credits cost you $5. Now, as you can see here, 150 credits will get you this worker's comp item. And these, these little gems are known as credits. So it's, a, it's like a couple of bucks every four hours that you can do to restore a thousand labor. What that means is that people who spend money, because you will not get that much labor just, just playing the game. You're not gonna get that much labor just playing the game. If you want to craft as much as possible, basically nonstop, you're going to be spending this money every single day for every four hours if you're staying on top of the cooldown, which is going to allow you to craft the high-end stuff uh, much faster at a greater pace, which allows you to flood the market more. Uh, this, is a, this is a concern for people. It certainly is. And I, I don't disagree with in terms of how it could affect the economy and all of that stuff. I can see why people are concerned. It's also going to mean that unless you're uh, not only are you a page, not only being a patron player, you're going to need to get the more max and the, the better regeneration. So you're paying a sub fee to, to be a better crafter, but then you're also paying real money to, to craft to the max, essentially. And that's that's very annoying because that means the people who spend real money are basically going to have the, the great opportunity to construct larger houses quicker and to make the better gear quicker. And this is the kicker. The best gear in this game comes from crafting. There is PvE gear, there is PvP gear, but PvE, there's hardly any dungeons. I think there's like three dungeons in the game. And for PvP, that gear's just not as good as the max end crafting gear. So it, what this means is that people who spend a ton of real money, subscribe, and then spend money every day for these workers' compensation are going to have the best stuff way before anyone else potentially has it. Even if you're a subscriber, even if you pay monthly, you will not have the best stuff as soon as someone who's buying this every four hours. You just won't because you're going to run into the labor point cap restriction. Another point of contention is this Arkham supply crate. So I'm actually going to buy one of these right now. So these Arkham supply crates, uh, Arkham is a, a specialty item. Arkham is a specialty crafting ingredient. To make stuff, you need Arkham. Evidently, right now, I didn't feel this was the case in Alpha because the cash shop wasn't even in the game at that point. Evidently right now it's hard to get Archeum. So on top of the restriction from the labor points, you now have this Archeum restriction which is basically, people are saying that you basically need to buy the supply crate in order to get enough Archeum to be effective at crafting essentially. That, that's the word on the street. I haven't like looked into this deeply or anything, but that's... That's basically the word on the street right now, and that's a bit of a concern as well. So I just wanted to talk with you briefly about those two. I know this video this video is going super long, so we're probably just going to cut it here. Uh, I don't, I didn't even cover everything that there is really to talk about in this game because there's just so much to do with this game. And I know the last points were a bit sour, but with that said, I'm still going to play this game because I think it's a lot of fun to play. I love the PvP, and the biggest complaints with the cash shop and all of that are only tied to crafting. Now, crafting is a huge part of this game, but with that said, if you are a free-to-play player, and if you just want an MMO to level up in and to PvP with, you can do that 100% free. Now, yes, you're going to be restricted on crafting. However, if you are in a guild with people who are a patron, who are paying that sub fee, and people who are spending money in the cash shop to increase their labor points, you can take advantage of friends of yours, whether it be guild or just people that you know that you're playing with. You can take advantage of friends who are excellent crafters. Now, that's not, that's not, that's not a solution, right? Because you're probably going to have to pay a ton of gold or you're going to have to farm the mats for them or whatever. But I guess the point is, you could, you really could, if you have a good guild 
or some friends who are really invested in crafting, you could just utilize their crafting without having to do all this stuff to be the best crafter yourself because the high-end items, they can be traded. So you can have someone craft these high-end stuff for you. That's not great, it's not a great solution, but that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing because I don't think I'm gonna be spending money every single four hours to restore a thousand labor points. That's a little bit ridiculous to me. But if there are people who are, and if you befriend them, you could do that. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not giving it the game a pass because of that, but all I'm saying is that I think it's possible for people to play this game for free, enjoy the PvP, and still get good gear without being crafters themselves. Is it gonna be easy? No, no it won't, but I guess it's possible. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thanks so much. Sorry for drowning on a little bit. Again, there's a lot to talk about with this game. There's a lot I haven't even covered here. There's probably gonna be a, uh, you know, a couple more videos or something from me uh, because I do plan to play this next week. Now, it is gonna be a busy couple of weeks. I've got uh, some, some sponsored deals and stuff going on. Plus, there's just a ton of games that I'm gonna to wanna to be playing. Uh, <laughs> it's a busy time. Destiny's coming out. This game's officially launching in a week. Uh, I'm going to be revisiting some MOBAs very soon or visiting some MOBAs for the first time very soon. There's just a ton of stuff going on. It's a busy time, but Archeage is a fun game. I loved it in the alpha, and I hope the community is here despite some of these cash shop concerns. Ho hopefully they get addressed. Hopefully it becomes more fair and balanced for people. Even if not, you know, they're, if they're restriction for free-to-play players, that makes sense because you're playing a game for free, a game that costs money to make. So if there are restrictions, I get it. But the fact that patron players are still restricted, the fact that people who are paying a sub fee still aren't getting the best of the best, oh boy, that should be frustrating to everyone. It's frustrating to me, that's for sure. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you around. Keep watching and keep owning. Ah, come with me. He will follow me around to the ends of the earth. Unless he actually falls into a pit at the end of the earth. Then he won't follow me. He'll die. That's no good. That's no good at all.